Stick It with Mr. Biggs is made possible by listeners like you. To support the show, go to askmrbiggs.com slash support. Stick It. It's time once again for yet another episode of Stick It with your man who knows all kinds of things about glues, adhesives, and bonding techniques. It's Stick It with Mr. Biggs. Hey, Roger, I'm curious. Did you commit that introduction to memory, or are you referring to some sort of handwritten notes? That one... Because usually you got notes in front of you. That one I, uh... I was I was going from 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 memory, but I'm not really. I'm not sure I remembered it correctly huh. though. I don't know if I remember. No, no, you, you you did you did good. I'm I'm not. I don't mean to criticize you. Uh, you did a good job. I, in fact, it uh, was pretty nice. That one is very close to uh, what I expect out of an intro. It's not there yet. Yeah. It's it is it's getting there. Well, but yeah. You're doing better, so nicely done there. I just, I well, like I said, I, I did have something written out, and then I left that that sheet at home, and so I kind of went by my memory. So I'm not 100% sure what I said right there is what I wrote down at okay. home. Okay, 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 Roger, listen. Mm-hmm. If you forget stuff, don't volunteer that information to the people that you've forgotten it, because now it sounds like you're ill-prepared to do the podcast. About adhesives and glues. Well, a little podcast that we like to call Stick It. Stick It. Now, stick It. Well, I mean, I, you mentioned how how that uh, the intro was pretty good, but it's not quite yeah. there. And I just yeah. wanted to sort yeah, of... Yeah, but then you jumped in and said that you cop. left your notes at home. Out. You left them at home, Roger. I just wanted to you know get it out there that I... I uh, um, the reason it probably didn't sound quite as good as it yeah. should be, is that I left the notes at home. Yeah, yeah. They're at home. sitting. Well, uh, you're going to want to work on that a little bit more, and we'll give it another run next time. But, you know, there's no stopping us now because the podcast has begun, and we're going to inform the people about different ways that they could use tapes, glues, adhesives to better their lives. Now, and, uh, before, before, we, before we get started, I have to ask, is this the same chair that I've always used in here? Because it doesn't seem to feel... Oh, it seems like the bottom is kind of... Well, I had a couple of fellas over uh, the other night, and I had to take most of the chairs up onto the veranda... And uh, I don't think I, I didn't pay attention to which chair I brought back down mm. into the rec room. So it, it might be a different chair. I, I'd like to remind you that it's my chair and I'll put it wherever I want. And it's not really your chair, per se. Right, it's my right. chair. Well, the thing is, can, I, I, th- I feel like the, the chair from before was more comfortable. This chair is, it's, it seems a lot harder on the... You seem to be under. seated at the table here. You, I mean, your, your posture is a little bit off, but yeah, other right. than that, it, it seems to be serving the advertised function of uh, being a chair. Well... So I don't understand why you're complaining Well, yeah, so it's, much. it's definitely a, a suitable Just for sitting, but I, I think that... Nitpicking uh, the, and bickering with me this, about the seating arrangements. The chair from before had a softer underside and um this one roger i had company over i wasn't gonna use the bad chairs i was gonna use the good ones so they're upstairs do you want me to go get it you want me to go get the one with the padding for your precious little bum bum did you who who came over i'll go get the chair you wait right there i'll be right back who who i'll go get your damn chair okay roger. well i'll go get it he's getting the chair he's getting the um and so this gives me a moment to remind you that uh, this is Stick It with Mr. Biggs, uh, answering all your questions about glues, adhesives, bonds, sealing agents, um, you know, wh- whatever you want to know. He can answer your questions. Plus, we uh, we address uh, quest- there you go. issues about there you what's, go. Wait, no. what happens about. Stand up. Okay. Just, Roger. Right, Roger, on. stand up. Uh. No, just move. Just move out of the way so I can put the chair I can't. in. My wire is. There you go. 
the headphones. Damn it! It's a cut around the the lever. There you go. Sit your sit your bottom down in that one. Why don't you give us a review of that chair? Uh, well, is that better? It's not the same chair, but it's uh, it's better than it's similar. It's better than the one I just had, but I don't. Well, I yeah. let's do the show and we'll see how I am. Let's do the. Don't new- forget to like, comment, and subscribe at uh, askmrbiggs.com to uh, stick it stick with it. Mr. Biggs. And uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take a question a little bit later on from right. uh, somebody emailing us at bigscast at gmail dot com. But that comes later, Roger. Right, right. Does That's it, in the d- email segment. But first, what? That's in the email. Uh, the email is going to be in the email segment. But right now, yeah, it, it's. Uh, I'm sorry. It's what? It's breaking news. No. Yeah. No, it's not. What's what's first? Breaking news! Breaking news. Yeah. It's where we take a news story from the headlines of the nation's news outlets, and uh, we tell you how to uh, remedy the situation with uh, useful tips with uh, glues and adhesives and such. Today's story comes to us from Redwood City, California. It's up, up north, northern California. Redwood City. California. It's the city that never sleeps. Redwood City, California. It's a different city. Uh, but go on. A turtle with a cracked shell was found behind a Target store in Redwood City. She is being treated at Wildlife Care Center. It says the turtle is female. Hmm, yeah. How do they know if a turtle is female or not? Well, I mean... Turtles breed in the traditional way well, that people breed, and so yeah. there's got to be a. Oh, I know, Roger. I know that we gotta we gotta keep this podcast clean. Don't go into too much details about the doodle and the dingle. No, no, no. What what I meant to say is there's uh, there's a male and a female because they you know they make eggs and whatnot, so they have. Yeah, to... but when you look at a turtle, it's got a shell, it's got legs, it's got a tail, it's got a a well, little head, which you know kind of looks like a doodle. That's but not, that's not the there's deal. no outward way of just looking at a turtle and knowing. Well, I, I, you know what? I think that I don't think they know. They're should, just saying she because of the Me Too movement. Me well, too, Roger. Right. Ha- ha- hashtag Me Too. Well, Female the, power. The thing is, though, I think that I mean, I'm sure you've seen those the the movies on YouTube or if you Google images, you can see one. Um, turtle sort of mounting She is being turtle. treated at Wildlife Care Center. The turtle has a three-inch crack in her shell, which may have been caused by being hit by a car, mm. said Buffy Martin Tarbox, the communications manager for the Penisula Pen- Pen- Humane Society. Pen- Pen- Peninsula Humane Society and SPCA. Pen- P- Peninsula, maybe. She goes on to say, shell cracks on turtles are oftentimes fatal, but with treatment, the shell can be restored. However, she does have a long road of recovery ahead of her. Mm. That according to Buffy Martin Tarbucks of the Peninsula Humane Society. Redwood City, California. So they've got yeah. they're in there they're in quite a pickle there. They've got a they've got a turtle with a crack in its shell. And so what you're going to gather, Buffy, are some uh, two part epoxy and some fiberglass sheets that are no larger than the turtle shell itself. And I'm going to have you grab a couple of uh, bamboo wooden skewers from uh- the. Barbecue department while okay. you're there at the Think, home store. Things that you make uh, kebab, kebabs with. Get the circular, the cylinder skewers. It's so, that, so that'll it's, come up a little bit later. It's important that they use the wooden ones as opposed to, as opposed to the metal ones? The metal one would work. However, I think you'll find that when you're done with the epoxy and the mess and the the blood from the turtle and just the, the all of the goo from the goo. fiberglass. You're going to want to throw most of this stuff away. Goo Did I say you should be wearing like a painter's smock while doing this job? Because the turtle 
has been injured. Let's be very clear and very sensitive to that fact. This turtle has been through an awful lot at the hands of society. And we want right. to try to fix that. So, Tragic. Um, they're at the SPCA. You probably got a veterinarian on hand. Like I'm to, hoping. I'd li- like to think so. I mean, if it's an SPCA yeah. facility, sort of a yeah. given, I would think. So, first of all, have the the vet on call. Give that turtle a once-over just to check it out, make sure that there's no road debris or retread pieces stuck in the turtle. I would think that's sure been that done the, by now. Make sure that crack in the turtle shell is clean and infection-free. Because if you wait until the infection is gone, it's going to make this go much better with mm-hmm. the mending process. Mm-hmm. If you do it too soon, then you're going to be sealing that infection in, and that turtle is not going to survive, nah. which is the point of this entire process. We want to help the turtle. So take the turtle, bring it up to your face, Get your schnoz real close down to that crack and just give a good sniff, a good sniff test. That's that's what she said. Sniff the turtle. <laughs> that's what she said. Sniff the turtle. Yeah. You know, you smell it. If you smell anything cheesy or funky, <laughs> yeah. you know what? It's, it's just, that's what she said. Sniff, if you smell anything cheesy or funky, <laughs> the crack. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> If you smell anything uh, cheesy or funky, I, lo- I love the office. You know that the infection is uh, still being uh, fought inside the turtle, and you want to make sure that that's all taken care of. So after the infection is gone, and the vet has given you the old thumbs up for shell repair, I want you to take that turtle up onto the examination table there at the uh, SPCA, and set it down. And prepare it for the uh, procedure, which mm-hmm. is going to involve, like I said, some epoxy and some fiberglass sheets. Now, now, right here up on the table, the yeah. the turtle's going to be squirming about a bit. He's going to be... Well, we little, don't know that for sure. Legs, I mean, it's possible the injuries from the accident, it may not be too excited about moving around, but... Right. If it is, you're going to want to restrain the turtle. Right. Well, And then again, I mean, how... How squir- Ask a couple orderlies to come in and hold the turtle, one on each foot, and just hold it down. Hold it down. Or if you're, if you're light on staff, what you can do is you can take the turtle and uh, put it on something like a uh, – get it up off the table. Like take a, ta- I, take a Dixie cup, a paper Dixie mm. cup. What? Put that upside down, invert it on the table, uh, and then set the turtle on top of the Dixie cup. That way, its little turtle legs will be flopping around and it can't get purchase right, right. on the stainless steel table. <laughs> and after you've done that, I want you to take out your smart telephone and I want you to take a picture and then send that to me. Maybe Because a- the idea of a turtle with its legs flopping around on top of a Dixie cup sounds... Adorable, and I would like to put that on my Facebook page. Or maybe use, I mean, for better stability, use two one toward the front and one toward the back. It's because if there's one, it, it's liable yeah. to squirm and tip over. Sure. And, yeah. So the Dixie, yeah. you, for extra stability, use two. Yeah. Well, it depends on how big the turtle is, but you know what? We're, we're, we're getting lost in the weeds, Roger. Yeah. We got to fix this turtle. Yeah. Once that turtle is immobilized, I want you to mix up some two-part epoxy on a disposable surface like a paper plate would be great. If you've got an extra yogurt container, you could use that. And then grab one of those round skewers. Use that to mix up the epoxy until you got a uniform color. Is it okay if there's some, some yogurt mixed into this or should, I mean? We want absolutely no yogurt smell whatsoever coming from either the container or the turtle. Okay, so finish, finish the yogurt before you do it. Yeah, Roger. Wash out the container. Okay. Wash it out. Okay, good. It's common sense. I don't. I don't have to tell people to wash. I don't know. I've, the I mean, finish. You, you don't want yogurt in your epoxy. Use your head. There's nothing in the instructions about putting yogurt in there. Well, I mean, if it's if it's on hand and you, I mean, okay. It's... You know what, Roger? Roger, forget the yogurt container. Use a paper plate. Two part epoxy, equal parts onto the plate. Mix it up with the skewer, and mm-hmm. then scrape the plate with the skewer. As you roll the skewer, that's going to help mix 
all the epoxy together, and then we're going to put a little bead of epoxy along the turtle shell, but not in the crack, oh. mind you. No, you don't want epoxy in the turtle. Turtles have survived for millennia without epoxy in their innards. If we they... want turtle parts to be inside, right. and we want the epoxy to be outside. So and you're the... going to want to put the epoxy on the outside of the shell along the crack. It's a, it's a, it, you bring up a good point, because if, if turtles a thousand years ago had epoxy in their shells, they may be gone by now. Just, just, just a you know a scientific assumption. Yeah, that's right. Well, Turtles a thousand years ago did not have epoxy inside of them. We, uh, we, we discussed you not saying every thought that comes into your head. Do you remember that the discussion? You can throw some of them in, but every single thought, maybe wait, just wait a little bit. Instead of just throwing out everything that you think of. Well, sometimes, sometimes on our wait, I, I, I forget yeah. about I forget about that. I know. So I thought I sure. Well, if you would have remembered your notes, you know, you wouldn't have this problem. I don't know. Back to the turtle. So you're going to put some epoxy down on either side of the crack, making sure that the wound itself is uh, completely clear of epoxy, and then take a fiberglass sheet and lay it down onto the turtle shell over the epoxy. Take some more epoxy, smear it over the fiberglass sheet, take another fiberglass sheet, and oh, oh my. maybe do it at a different angle, like a 45-degree angle from the first, so the grain is uh, ever so slightly different than the first sheet. And you're going to re- rinse and repeat, as they say. You're going to put more epoxy on the fiberglass sheet, you're going to put another sheet on top of that. And you mm-hmm. keep doing that until you're all out of epoxy and or fiberglass sheets. And go ahead and leave the turtle there overnight. Make sure that epoxy cures good and well. Want it nice and hard. Turtle shell hard. Maybe maybe leave some food and water out for it as well. If it's going to be out all night. Well, it's on top of a Dixie cup. You yeah. You have to raise the food and water up on another Dixie. Yeah, you can put another Dixie cup up nearby with some turtle chow on it. I don't even know what turtles eat. What do turtles eat? Uh, worms, You know what? Maybe? That's not our problem. That's the problem of Buffy Martin Tarbox. She'll figure that out. Right, right. She runs the SPCA of Penisula Humane Society. Yeah, in Redwood City. All right. So uh, when you come back in the morning, the turtle shell's all nice and uh, hard again. Go ahead and release it back onto the streets of Redwood City, California. I don't recommend letting it go near Target, though. That is not a turtle safe habitat. Take it out in the woods or yeah. like in a yeah. a drainage right. ditch somewhere. Turtles love drainage ditches. Now, so you what you're saying is what what you've put on the shell is is good to go. It's not going to cuz well I thought you'd might want to try to mash the crack together so there's no longer a crack you know it's not an opening it's just a well normally roger when you're trying to mend a crack with epoxy you would be right you'd be absolutely right you want to get a little bit of epoxy into the crack and you push the cracks together and then you maybe clamp it with some force on there this is not one of those times roger we're talking about one of god's creatures right we're talking about a turtle and it's been wounded and the turtle shell will uh, grow back together over time and underneath the fiberglass patch that you've created with the uh, epoxy. Well, well, once you've done that, though, it's good to go. Once you got your, your fiberglass sheets and your epoxy and everything is cured yeah. and dried. The yeah, sheet- well, assuming that you've done it properly right. and uh, you haven't made a mess of things. I would recommend going for 15-minute epoxy if you're going to attempt this, though, because if you uh, make the mistake of using five-minute epoxy, like I unfortunately did one time, then uh, you're going to have a mess on your hands because it's going to take a lot longer than five minutes to glue up a turtle shell, I'll tell you that, especially if it's screwing around, flopping its legs on top of a Dixie cup. It's going to be at least a 15-minute job. Okay. And then there's going to be layers, multiple layers. So each one of those has its own uh, drying, its curing period. 
Yeah, well, the the epoxy batch that you mixed up at the beginning all came from the same batch mm. and will be curing at exactly the same rate. Keep that in mind. So you got to... So uh, you if gotta, you screw up and you use the five-minute epoxy, you're not going to have enough time to get good adhesion between the layers. It's going to start sticking to your bamboo skewer. Then you're going to get it all over your hands. Your hands are going to get stuck to the turtle. You're going to start screaming for help. You're going to be waving the turtle in the air. There's going to be epoxy everywhere. You're probably going to knock over the stack of fiberglass sheets. And the other people at the SPCA are going to wonder exactly what your qualifications are. So, for the sake of everybody, most of all the turtle, use at least 15-minute epoxy for this particular job. And that has been Breaking News! Breaking News. Unstick it with Mr. Biggs. Stick it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Wait, I said that wrong. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And all those materials can be found at your local box, hardware store, box, the epoxy. I ma- well, I mean, it depends on what store you go to, but yeah, they're not exotic materials here. We're, we're talking about just some epoxy, and I, do, I'm not, I don't care about the brand. It doesn't really matter in this case. It's just a turtle. I mean, it's not that important. It's probably not going to survive very long anyway. So just use the cheap stuff. Use some of the house brand epoxy. Okay. okay. That that'd be fine. Um um the shirt uh the chair that you brought in is also oh giving me a few problems, but that's okay. Let me I'm going to adjust. I don't know if you noticed, but the the cushion on this one's a little loose. It's a little off. I am taken back by the amount of complaining that you are doing about your chair. No human being should be this concerned about where they're sitting. Well, it's not, I mean, you know, if I was just sitting down for a few minutes and we were going to hash out a uh, plans for uh, a get-together. Next time, uh, I'm going to make a note of this. Eggs. Write this down. All right. Before the next podcast, I need to replace Roger's chair with an apple crate. Because he's very precious about his chair, and he needs to learn some uh, some politeness and not complain during the podcast about where his bottom sits. It's not like you're normally very particular about your bottom, Roger. You, may- you normally don't care where it's been. You mentioned earlier that you had some some people over, and that's why the chairs were out on the patio. Who 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 who'd you have over? Who came by? Well, let's see. Who, who were? I think uh, Wally came by. From the the uh, plumber. Wally, yeah, Wally the uh, plumber, good guy. Oh, he's great. Yeah. He's a good guy. Uh, Curtis, Curtis came by. Um, you know Mitch? No, can't say Mitch. Wait, Mitch from uh, <laughs> the trophy shop? He, yeah, he knows who you are. <laughs> yeah, he knows who you are. I don't. I don't uh, let's see. Who I, else was here? I've heard the the name Mitch, but I don't know if I've ever met Mitch. But I do know he's from the uh, trophy shop, and uh, they make keys there too, don't they? You're not uh, you're not bent out of shape that I didn't ask you to come over, are you? This wasn't like a planned event. I mean, it was like a few days prior. We decided that we were going to get together and hang out and maybe enjoy some drinks. Sit out by the fire pit, share some stories. But it literally came together over the course of five or six days before we actually did it. It was kind of a last-minute deal. Only a few phone calls were exchanged before. Yeah. Very few phone calls exchanged before we actually did it. Not um, did the event. You never. I mean, did did you not have my my number during that time, or is it? No, I, I've got your number. Your number hasn't changed in probably 15 years, Roger. It's the same number. That's true. It's yeah. yeah. That's, that's I'm just and it's in your phone, so you could just you know say Roger. Uh, you know while you're while you're making the phone calls to Wally and Mitch yeah, and sure. Curtis, yeah. you could have. 
Nobody complained about the seating arrangements that evening. Not one. Everyone was fine with it. I don't know why you are so persnickety about where you put your bottom. Why? Well, I- I would have liked to have met Mitch. Seems like a, a, a he's an, he's a good guy, right? He's he's got uh, that uh, trophy shop. He's got. Uh, What's the website address again, Roger? For the people that are listening to the podcast about adhesives and glues. Uh the the uh, the the website is askmrbiggs dot com. Yeah. And from there you can go and. Um, We've got links like, for... Like, comment, and subscribe right, to the right. show. Facebook yeah. uh, link. We've got a Twitter link. We've got a... Uh, we ask people to send us emails and ask questions about tapes, glues, adhesives, any project you got that you got two things that are apart from one another, but you need them together. Right. You just send me the question, and I will explain to you how to stick it. Stick it. It's the name of the podcast, Roger. Yeah. Yeah, stick it, stick, stick it, it with Mr. Biggs. With Mr. Biggs, that's you. I'm yeah. Roger. It's time uh, to check out an email here. Are you, are you Grab ready? Grab that mail sack. Dear Mr. Biggs, I am in the fifth grade and... Oh, wait. Email. It's time for... It, okay, 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 it's, okay. It's Just time move for, it on. Move, it's time turn for it off. email. Turn it off. Move it along. Email, email. That's email, not helping. Email, Move it along. Email, 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 email. Is this part of the email, Roger? Is this? It's part of the part of it. Part of the intro. I've been work. I practiced on that too. Huh? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, dear, dear Mr. Biggs, I am in the fifth grade, and Mrs. Grady, teacher for grade five, says we have to make a diorama about our favorite state, and I chose Wisconsin because it is the best state because it is where Uncle Chris... <laughs> That's debatable. Well, I'm yeah. not sure about that. Well, let's not get too hasty. Well, let, let's let him. Let's let the uh, let's let him finish his email. Um, well, when, when somebody says something stupid, I can't just let it go. Well, let's. Let, Who does this guy think he is bragging about Wisconsin? Well, let's let's hear him out. Let's hear him out. Um, wait, I lost my note. Okay, um, I chose Wisconsin because is the because because it is the best state, and because it is where Uncle Chris lives. I have the shoebox and cheese, but every time I glue the cheese, it comes off. Mrs. Grady, mean, says we can't ask our mom and dad. Wait, wait, what's her name? Mrs. Grady. Mrs. Grady, what? Uh, uh, mean. She he put in parentheses the word mean. So he's trying to say that Mrs. Grady is mean. Yeah, I believe so. That's not phrased very uh, naturally. I don't. I don't understand. I'm not certain that that's exactly what he means. Well, I mean, he's in the fifth grade, so he's probably. Oh, he's just a kid. Yeah, he's ten. Oh, he's, he's well, that explains 10. the fifth grade part. Now I yeah. now I understand. Roger, you should have mentioned that at the beginning of the email. So I. I I wouldn't have called the kid stupid had I realized that uh, he was in the fifth grade. Yeah, I mean, I would have used a bigger word because he'd be too dumb to understand what it meant. I think he. Uh, I, he's he t- an ignoramus. I would have said something like that. Maybe. I think he. I think he touched on it earlier in the email, but that's okay. Um, reading on, Mrs. Grady Mean says we can't ask our mom and dad for help, but she didn't say I can't ask Mr. Biggs. Which would be oh, you? Which would be you? Yeah, he found a loophole. He did. <laughs> he did find a loophole. Yeah, uh, we're gonna cheat on this assignment, aren't we? Well, yeah, I like it. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna work around. He's gonna make a, uh, an end around, a reach around, and go through. Okay, the- stupid. What's your question? How can I make the cheese glued on to the box? Thank you. P.S. Mrs. Grady says we can't use glitter glue. Mean. Signed, Kenny Tooley of Grand Rapids, Michigan. I think it's Michigan. She says you can't use glitter glue 
to glue cheese on a box. Well, in this particular what, case, I don't think what you What kind of assignment is this? When I was in school, we would do math, English, yeah. you know, stuff like that. We weren't gluing slices of cheese to a box. Well, I don't understand what he's supposed to be getting out of the assignment. Well, he's supposed to just basically do some sort of, uh, like he said, a diorama, which would be some sort of scene inside of a box. And uh, it's supposed to be on their favorite state. His is Wisconsin, and they have... Because they make cheese in Wisconsin? Yeah, they do. Okay, well, first of all, what's the kid's name? Uh, uh, Kenny. All right, Kenny. You're shooting for low-hanging fruit here. Right. Cheese? Wisconsin? Really? How much thought did you put into this? Now, your teacher, Mrs. Grady, I, uh, she sounds like a fine lady. I, I could not agree with her more about the pox upon our society that is glitter glue. Right. So right. when your teacher says no glitter glue, you heed that warning because glitter glue is ridiculous. Adhesives need to be adhesing. They don't need to have any sort of extra accoutrement or adornment or any additives that make it visually appealing. Because that's going to do nothing but prevent it from sticking properly. Yeah, and if you want glitter glue, you use a proper glue, and you use a shaker filled with glitter, and you can shake some on afterwards, which I still find visually repugnant. Right. But if that's what you want to do, fine. Well, But you're trying to glue cheese in a box. Some Sometimes. I don't, I don't think it calls for glitter glue in the first place, some, so it's no real loss here, Kenny. Sometimes uh, the fifth graders like a little glitter. In their projects. So, you got cheese, and you're trying to glue it in a box, and it won't stick. So, uh, what kind of cheese are you using, Kenny? Um, he's uh, He just sent in the what email. What kind of cheese? He, he uh, didn't talk about any specific kind of cheese. He just said okay. he's okay. Uh, he wants to glue cheese in his diorama, and okay. it's not sticking. All right. So, uh, you're going to want to stick to some low-moisture cheese. Because if it's got a high moisture content, most glues, uh, well, I suppose you could use like a polyester glue or a CA, but uh, no, nah, that's probably not really appropriate because a uh, troublesome little boy using those kinds of glues is bound to get his hand glued to his head. So that, we're going to have to forget about that one. Okay, Here, here's what you do. You get some low moisture cheese like a Parmesan or like a hard cheddar. Or a, Rom, uh, a Romano, maybe a Romano. Romano, a Romano would be a great choice. Yeah, cut that up into some chunks, and you, we, we got to rule out hot glue in this situation right. because, I mean, we don't want to melt the cheese prematurely. Did he mention anything about wanting to eat the cheese after the assignment is done? He did not. He did not. So we have to okay. kind of assume that that's not going to happen. We don't have to worry about toxicity. In this case, that's uh, good. That you know what that that actually opens up our our options for getting the uh, the cheese to stick. So what I am going to recommend a rubber cement, nice, safe, non toxic rubber cement. Or you know what you could use? Go down your Oriental food store, Kenny, and uh, walk up to the guy behind the counter, look him square in the eye, and say, "I need some Yamato sticking paste." He'll know what I'm talking about. Just say Yamato sticking paste. He's, it's a, it's an edible adhesive that uh, they use in in with like rice paper. And oh, it's, it, I, it's got okay. wheat in it, and it's it's completely edible. It's not good. It's not tasty. But in the event that you did want to eat the cheese when you were done, you could use that. Or conversely, <laughs> what you could do is this is a good idea. You make the cheese diorama with the Yamato sticking paste, and it, you turn it in, and you say to Mrs. Grady, Hey, Mrs. Grady, when you're done grading this, uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and keep that cheese for yourself? A little something special for you, honey. I'd say that's one way to get it, eh? Well, <laughs> keep I, the cheese for yourself. I don't know if he should call Mrs. Grady honey, but... There's I'm, nothing... Yeah. That a little palm greasing doesn't help. No situation. It's always improved by giving a little something extra. Well, I mean, it's fifth grade. Make sure you cut these chunks of cheese very small. They got to have low mass 
because the adhesives that we're using here for the shoebox uh, cheese diorama, which I still frankly don't understand, it's not strong adhesion. So make sure you cut them very, you know, he, here's an idea. Cut them very small. In fact, you could use a cheese grater. Here's what you're going to do. All right, I got it now. This, this is, is good. This is plan B. No, this is plan D at this point. This is D. Plan D. D? D? Okay. You're going to take the cheese and you're going to grate it up very finely. You Ask your mom for her cheese grater. Don't worry, we're not going to glue it. And you're going to clean it when you're done because you're a good kid and you respect your parents. Grate up the cheeses. Get yourself a stabilizing chamber and an industrial vacuum pump. Grab a bottle of clear polyester resin. Now we're going to pack the grated cheese into some forms, place them inside the stabilizing chamber, and attach a uh, two-stage vacuum pump that's oilless. We're dealing with uh, foodstuffs, and we don't want to get any contamination here. You pour the resin into the mold with the grated cheese. Close up the stabilizing chamber, get a good seal, fire up the vacuum pump, and take it all the way down to negative 29 millibars. I want a full vacuum all the way down, down to the vacuum of space. We're going to suck out all the air from the stabilizing chamber. Leave that going overnight. Wait for that polyester resin to cure. When you come back the next day, you release the vacuum, turn off the two-stage pump, and then you're going to have these blocks of grated cheese that are sealed within the pucks of polyester resin. Now, you don't have to worry about spoilage. The presentation is going to be second to none because it's in this beautiful crystal clear polyester resin that you can now use any adhesive on. You can use your CA. Now you can use hot glue. Stick them in that box and make that ridiculous project that I do not understand. Well... Well, I've, now, I've, the cheese is not edible at this point because right. it is encased in resin, but if that's your concern, just buy your teacher like a, a nice cheese basket and say, here you go, toots, that's for you, that's something special for you, and uh, I expect a good grade, if you know what I mean. A little summer sausage and... Thanks, sweetheart. Okay. Throw that in. Now, now Teachers love that stuff. This is, uh, it sounds like a good way to get the... Uh... Uh, do a nice job on the project, but I'm okay. You, you let's go through the ch- checklist. We've got a uh, stabilizing chamber, sure, a vacuum, a two stage vacuum pump, vacuum. at least nine CFM. If you could uh, increase that, that's all the better. It'll okay. uh, get it down to a low vacuum much faster. And then a, a clear polyester rosin, resin, not rosin. We want a resin, resin. Um, so, Use um, a casting resin for this particular project because it's not something we're actually using to glue. We're using it to cast the cheese inside of an acrylic sealed block. Right. You see. Right. Well, what I'm what I'm getting at is what I mean. It doesn't seem likely, or it seems unlikely that. Uh, well, uh, that this is going to be laying around the house at uh, Kenny's house. So. Um, well, yeah, you got to take some initiative. You got to go head out down, and get the get the equipment to, that you need. Head down to Harbor Freight and get some of this stuff. Yeah, you can pick up a a, a good uh, VE two eighty nine CFM two stage vacuum pump. You can easily get that for under four hundred bills these days. Right. Okay. Um, Use your allowance money for something useful, Kenny, and that's how you stick it. Stick it. <laughs> And that's that's it. He wins. He wins the contest. He wins the he wins the project. There ain't gonna be any other kid in that class. I don't care what state they get. They are not gonna have the pizzazz and wow factor of a couple of pucks of cheese infused resin in a discarded Reebok shoebox. It's just going to wow. It is going to wow the teacher. She's going to be so happy, and she'll have all that cheese. That's one happy lady, I'm guessing. All Good right. luck, Kenny. All right, Kenny. Go get him. And um, this is uh, this is Ben E. 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 No, e- no, e- no. Rod, 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 Roger, Roger, Meh. Roger. Meh. No, no, there's Meh. no. Listen. Meh. No, there's no intro, and there is certainly no outro. I that to, much I know. 
I'm certain there's no outro. I know that for a fact. I had to do my own sort. I don't have, you know, any of yeah. the equipment, so I had to kind of do... It just sounds like you're making noises with your mouth hole. Well. It's distracting. I can't concentrate on the podcast. I, I don't even remember what happens next. What do we do now? Well, we just kind of finish things up. We give out the information. We don't, we don't just sit there making noises with our head hole? We don't do that? Because that's what you were doing. I just want to let people know that that was... Uh, the email portion of the show. Let people know that they need to like, subscribe, comment, and share at s- no Ask. at askmrbigs.com. And uh, you can send us a, an email at bigscast at gmail.com. Make sure you put two G's in there, or else it goes to some other guy who does not like getting your emails. He's and not going to. Frankly, a little bit bent out of shape that some of you don't know how to type properly. He's uh, he he has sent a few emails to us wondering when we're going to yeah. fix that. He knows absolutely nothing about adhesives, tapes, or glues. That much I know. Yeah. Stick it. Thank you to everybody that supports the show on Patreon, like Mark Sari Teeley, Ricard Meebly, Johan. Rich Ricker, Matthew Alias Humbort, Ricky Johnsons, Michael D. McElwoozle, Matt Hemberson, and Phone Losers of America. Why do they keep losing their phone? Just put it in your pocket, dummy! <laughs> Stupid. If you want to support the show, head on over to askmrbigs.com slash support. Stick it. That's it. Let's go ahead and clean up here, and I am going to have to ask you to take that chair upstairs. Put it back where I found it. Okay. I had to go get it for you. All right. Well, listen, next time you, uh, you use this chair and the other chairs um, with Mitch and Curtis... Wally, maybe, uh, you know, give me a call. Maybe I, I can bring over some... Um, Stick it. Some uh, Arizona iced teas. Something. Roger, the dip The dip did not serve more than five or six servings. There was nowhere near enough dip. I don't see how that would have been possible, but uh, it's something I will take into consideration. That's all. Sure. That's I'll it. I'll think about it. Yeah. All right, well, uh, we'll see everybody next time. We'll see you next time on Stick It with Mr. Biggs. Stick It. Stand up. No. There you go. Damn it.